friends described him as very happy with his job and reject the conclusion that he was capable of causing such destruction. He was a very calm, responsible man. Or let me say, he was acting responsibly, like many others who learned gliding here. All right. Uh, joining us now is Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, my friend and America's psychologist. You see him featured on CNN and NBC's The Today Show. Doctor, welcome. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Steve. Well, the pleasure is mine. All right, let, let me ask you, first of all, I'm getting tired of hearing news reports saying that he killed himself plus 150 others. Or he committed suicide. I, I, I don't know. I mean, if he wanted to kill himself, uh, and, and this was just a suicide, and you're the pro, that's why I'm asking you for your opinion, I, you know, he could have just gone in a room and killed himself or jumped off a bridge or whatever. He murdered these people. To me, the suicide is coincidental. Well, it is uh, something that's very akin to what happened in Aurora, uh, Colorado, that happened in uh, Connecticut, um, where we saw that uh, youngsters, uh, in this case, uh, wanted to commit suicide, but they wanted to kill as many people as possible at the same time. So this is a mass murder. This is what it's about. But he also knew that he would take himself out in the process, too. So it's about rage and anger, and yet we see this again. Right, but, but you, know, you know, in the case of the school shootings or, or Aurora, you don't, you, don't, you don't hear them say it was a suicide. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, but it, the, the reality is something happened to this guy. Maybe something had been going on all along. Um, and certainly I think mental health issues uh, play a big part in this, as, as they always do with these rampages. That's what it was, a quiet rampage that horrifically killed 149 people and himself making 150. So, I mean, this is a situation of, yes, it was a mass murder, but at the same time, this is someone who wanted to kill himself, right. but not in a way that was private, in a way that was selfish, in a way that hurt so right. many people. Well, that's a good, great lead into my next question. If he suffered from depression, let's say, as some reports indicate, uh, it seems odd to think that just depression could lead to this kind of mass murder, no? Yes, depression can lead to um, some sort of uh, um, very self-destructive behavior. I think in this particular case, this is someone who had more than a depression. Depressed people don't kill other people. Depressed people end up hurting themselves many times. So this was a, 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 a situation of someone who had some sort of a, a severe personality disorder and maybe even some psychosis going on. And, and what's the possibility that he may have been on medication and what influence might that have played? Well, if, if he was on medication, of course, there's always the issue of side effects or that he wasn't taking the medication he should have been. Yeah. All right. Now, now you know, when you hear, as we heard in the soundbite leading into this piece, people say, oh, th this can't be him. I don't believe this. This was a, He was a great guy. It wasn't his character. Um, th does, it, does, it, does it beg the question? Or are we all subject to this? In other words, uh, are there telltale signs that people, uh, you know, may engage in this kind of behavior? Or can you fool the world and then just do something like this? Well, this may have been someone who was not only fooling the world, but fooling himself and being in denial as to how serious his issues were. And then he imploded, uh, regrettably, uh, horrifically, took out 149 other people with him. We have to look at the issue as to how do we handle triggers in our lives? How do we handle uh, trauma? Uh, most of us do it well, but if you're emotionally unstable, it could lead to a situation like this. And doctor, if you think you see a friend or a family member who's acting in a, in a strange way, what should they do? The most important thing is to get them help, talk to them about whatever pain they're going through, and more than anything else, listen to what it is that they're saying. And too often we turned a blind eye or a deaf ear on someone who may be having issues because we're afraid of dealing with it or even afraid of the rage that they may be manifesting. Now, what could the airlines do? Because to, to me, we had an airline safety pilot on yesterday who said, if a pilot wants to do this, there's no way to stop them. What could the airlines do to better protect against something like this you know, happening again and making sure that the pilots are mentally stable? Two things. One is instead of just giving a psychological at the beginning of the career to make sure that they can be pilots, giving them psychologicals every year. 
Uh, and that's important because they're under a tremendous amount of stress in this very high-skilled career that they're in. And the second thing is to not stigmatize individuals who may be having some mental health issues uh, and so that they don't lose their jobs. And that's the problem with the pilots, with cops, and so on. They're afraid of reporting their mental illness right. because they're afraid that they may lose their job. Doctor, uh, great. We got a lot in in a short amount of time. Great to talk to you, sir. Have a great weekend, and thank you. Thank you, Steve. Bye -bye. All right. Uh, thank you, doctor. Dr. Jeffrey Gardier. Very interesting, folks. Very, very interesting. When we come back, uh, former federal prosecutor Larry Klayman of Freedom Watch will join us. His latest efforts uh, to get Hillary's emails. Don't go away.